Greg Byrne, the Alabama Athletics Director, joins us now on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. What is up, Greg? How are you today? I'm doing great. How are y'all? Doing awesome. Thanks a lot. To be completely frank, uh, when we you were out of town last week, you said you would come on this week. Uh, we initially had a couple things we wanted to talk to, and a lot has <laughs> happened since then. Uh, so we may work backwards here. I, I would like to start getting your reaction to the news that Oklahoma and Texas are, in fact, coming to the Southeastern Conference in 20. 20- 24 it is an exciting time but there are a lot of unknowns i would assume still with all of this yeah there are obviously uh, you're, every day there seems to be new significant news so you can't uh probably hard to take a day off from paying attention to what's going on in the college sports space uh but yes it's uh, uh we we were excited obviously when when we originally announced the news that texas and oklahoma would become the southeastern conference and we've been working on some of the logistics and what that looks like over the last couple of years. And then to have that be moved up to July 1st, 2024, I think there was something that sounds like the Big 12 was interested in having happen. And, and Texas and Oklahoma were too, and, and we were. Now, you know, we've already started doing scheduling discussions and what that looks like, but uh, that speeds up the time frame a little bit, knowing that it will be a year early, earlier than what we originally expected. But their, their rich traditions and performance in so many sports is going to they're going to be a wonderful addition to our conference and and certainly excited when they get to be here and be permanent members yeah i know you can't get into specifics but everybody's speculating on you know scheduling partners who those permanent partners are going to be do you feel like you guys are close to a model well we're close to having models to look at we we that has (laughs) happened already (laughs) Uh, right. Don, Don, Dunaway said you guys have already got the schedules in place for 2024. <laughs> don't, don't lie to me, Greg Byrne. You're looking at the schedule, aren't you? Well, I tell you what, I, I need to see that because I've missed that one. So uh, <laughs> oh. there, there are there are uh, proposals. There's op, there, there's things we're looking at. You know, the big the big one is eight versus nine conference games. How many we end up playing there, and and there'll be some more discussion about that going forward. You know, I know Coach Saban and I and myself have been advocates for more good games in college football in the Southeastern Conference. You know, and so, you know, but I also think it'd be fair to say when we, you know, we we had been talking about that for quite a while and didn't look like there was much interest in going to nine games. Uh, and then when Texas and Oklahoma happened, that that obviously changed the narrative a little bit. I, I will say, though, that we started scheduling two power five non-conference games which I think our fan base will enjoy being a part of, you know, going to Texas last year, Texas will be here this year. You know, all the different ones that are on our schedule in the future, I think are good for the University of Alabama. They're good for the value of the Southeastern Conference. And so, you know, then the other new caveat to all this is that we have the expanded playoff. So what's the right number of conference games for our our program, for our conference? That will be discussed more in the coming in the coming weeks and months, but I, you know, I think we're going to have to have some resolution sooner than later now because of them being them coming on a little bit earlier than what we expected. I do feel like my comment on you knowing the schedule is closer than, uh, or at least you would believe it's closer to being reality than LT saying you have unlimited money buried in the back of the Malmore building, right? That that's fair. Yeah, <laughs> the, the scheduling is a reality. The uh, unlimited fund account that uh, I get accused of of, uh, of hiding, I, I honestly have not found that. You yet. just got fifty million dollars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, where does it go? Uh, you, hey, you see the picture behind me of twenty one teams. Yes, uh, but, but uh, 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 I, uh, I haven't found a way to do that yet for free. Uh, of that money, of that money, though, you uh, uh, and and I was the guy that said it. A day of reckoning was coming uh, about Alabama basketball, and uh, and then Nate Oates and Alabama reached an agreement for a long term contract. Uh, I would imagine even before uh, any move was made in places like Austin, Texas, or anywhere else, you were probably already working on a new new deal with Nate Oates. Uh, how do you feel about having that? that deal in place now well it was, it was actually pretty easy um n- when we hired nate uh, and i knew when we hired him people were probably going to go who you know the majority of of, of our fans were going to say who who the heck is this guy but we you know really felt he was a great fit for us and who we and who we were and who we are and what we do and uh and so I told him when we hired him i think he was second to last in the league in salary and what if you look at I don't like me's, my's, and I's, okay? But if you look at who I've hired historically from a coaching standpoint, um, I like to see people who are on their way up 
and and you know kind of their tra trajectory is is uh is is heading in that direction um not all you know I, i've i've hired some more experienced coaches at times and, and you every every search is unique but i told myself listen you come and do a good job we're going to take care of you and so in 2020 the year we won the sec uh men's regular season and conference cha or tournament championship uh if if you remember the week our game against a and m got uh canceled because of covid i actually called them that morning and said hey let's uh let's let's get together now that we have a few hours where we're both free and uh we kind of knocked a deal out in about six hours and uh this time uh his agent and i have been talking because we didn't have that same cancellation and such and, and his agent's done a really nice job for him he they've known the entire time we want him here they they and they have been very clear that they want to be here and uh you know obviously the job that he has done has been remarkable uh he's got a really good staff put together he's got a good culture within his program uh, i i saw the comments from the 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 team the team about when his uh contract got extended and how they feel about him so uh it was uh, we felt when we did it, it was the right time to announce it, it but it was something we've been wor working on for quite a while and uh and obviously he deserves to be up in the upper, upper part of the sec from a salary standpoint we've made that commitment to him and uh and it, it's a partnership that we're looking forward to having for a long time the other part and i've been very firm about this i do think when you make an investment in a coach like this it's it shouldn't be just a one-way street and so to his credit very much he's been very open to having a very large significant buyout that shows a commitment on his side too and so that's that's the approach we've tried to take. And uh, I think our 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 actions and our steps have, have been positive that reflect well on on the commitment on both sides and, and how we feel about the long term uh, um, viability of being our head coach here at Alabama. Alabama Athletics Director Greg Byrne is with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. I ask you this question because it, it you, you know what's coming next. And we get asked this a ton, the status of the arena and when coach is on with us. He, he talks about it a lot, and he says, I need people to donate. Is, is, is that just a good summary of where you are on moving forward with that new arena because of cost increase? Yeah, let's, let, let, we can go a little granular on it as best we can. Uh, um, when we announced the Crimson Standard, it was $600 million 10-year deal, 10-year fundraising, because you got it. The best departments honor their past. They focused on today and create vision for the future. And so that was creating our vision for the future. And I said, the day we announced it, I said, listen, what this looks like today, which at that point we thought a renovation of Coleman was the right path for us. What this looks like today and what it will look like three years from now will be different because it will continue to evolve. Um, now, so it has changed and what the priorities have been. But I also said very clearly, because it's the God's honest truth, phase two, which was the basketball arena, could not support itself. We needed phase one to allow phase two to happen. Okay. And so, um, so that, that, and as we started evolving and looking into it more and more and having more discussions about it, we really thought, okay, maybe the renovation to Coleman isn't the right thing at that point. And maybe a new arena is the better thing. Cause when you start from scratch, you can build more of what you want within financial realities. And so talk to our trustees, Dr. Bell and announced last February, a $183 million, uh, 10,000, a little over 10,000 seat arena. And, uh, and so that, and, but there's multiple steps that we have to go through, whether you're building an arena, whether you're building a, a, a practice gym, whether you're building a, 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 a classroom that we're required to go through. And that was the first public part of what we could do with it. Then, and, and I, and guys, I want you to know when I sit down and talk to architects or we sit down and talk to architects, I'm very firm with them and saying, guys, you got to get us numbers that are right. You have to do that because as soon as we go public with this, everybody's going to say, oh, that's okay. That's you're moving forward. And that's what we're doing in the architect's defense. They didn't anticipate the level of inflation that we've been under for the last year. And so over about two or three more meetings, I would walk in there and they have very kind of grim looking faces on them and say, ah, it's gone up some, well, how much? $25 million. Next meeting, another $25 million. <laughs> wow. And then the third one is, okay, now we think we could be close to $250 million, a, a quarter of a bill, I mean, a quarter of a billion dollars. And, um, and that was not what we were expecting. Now, 
with that, our donors have been extremely generous. And yesterday I was in Birmingham trying to raise some money. We actually had a gift that came in this morning. So we are actively doing that. But I also want you to know, as we were doing this, we have looked, we have tried to look at every avenue possible as far as what opportunities are there. We don't necessarily go public with that all the time. So people don't know what we're doing, but I know the arena in, in Austin has been talked a lot about. We actually met with those people three years ago and trying to say, could this be a solution for us? And they're a good group. They're doing the right thing. Um, and what we what we went from was maybe, hey, potentially a, a arena for a very low cost for the University of Alabama to now when we get when we kept digging on it and, and to build an arena to support concerts in the level that they have is a completely different build than the building a, a competition only facility. Well, it got after to about two and a half years into it, we were like, it would be more expensive to build it through them in which we would have to give up a ton of control than it would be to go build our own arena ourselves. And so, you know, I, I, I wanted our fans to know that we have not sat still. We've continued to work on it. We're working on it every single day. We have fiduciary responsibility where I can't jeopardize the rest of our department based off of one facility, but, you know, I, I, Regina doesn't let me go to the grocery store very often because she doesn't trust what I'm going to bring back. <laughs> what was on the list. Same. But a little while ago, she sent me to the grocery store and, and I was in Publix and I, and the second person that came up to me and said, you know, when are you going to build the arena? You got plenty of money. Um, I just saw the profit uh, that you announced 18.5, which the other part where that is all accounted for from a debt service standpoint, didn't get a whole lot of attention <laughs> and, and he said you're gonna lose you're gonna lose nate and i said well we just signed him to a contract extension he said well he's still gonna go and i said well i talked to nate a lot and i think we got a good relationship <laughs> with what christy curry's doing and i said to the gentleman and it was a, it was a healthy conversation so it wasn't defensive it wasn't anything like that but i said i said let me ask you something he said what's that i said you know, I know, you know, Nate has said he wants the arena and he does. And he, and he and I talk about that regularly. I said, Christy Curry wants the arena. Ashley Priest Johnson wants the arena for gymnastics. I said, you know who may want the arena more than any of those people? He said, who? I said, me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to shop for groceries. Way. I can't <laughs> shop for groceries anymore. Right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. And that's okay. That's part of, that's part of the role I'm in. And I love interacting with our fans. I think, I think people have seen that. Um, and so anyways, it is a priority. It, we have we have to balance that with financial realities. It's not just as simple as saying let's go spend a quarter billion dollars and anything else, you know, to heck with it. Um, and but you know what's really cool is the fact that there's such passion about wanting to do this, and so many schools are are just trying to get people to care. And one of the things we're so for fortunate about at Alabama is people care, and that's why we're here. That's why we're a part of it. And uh, and it's exciting to see what's going on. You know, women have won five straight on the road last night, one at Kentucky. Um, we just had our, our season high in gymnastics scores the other day. Uh, and and we're, we're having success in a lot of different sports because we've got great people here making it happen. We've got great support. And what's going on with our men's basketball program? I saw I saw a, a couple of tweets in the last 24 hours that we're doing some really historical things. And uh and that's really cool. And let's let's uh, do everything we can to to enjoy that, be a part of it. And please know that we're we are diligently working, trying to move it forward, and 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 doing that with uh, with some of the realities we're facing. So, Greg, I am labeled as the guy that leaves events at halftime. It's a fair label. Uh, you guys, you you mentioned at the at least uh, you own it. Yeah, I do <laughs> own it. Um, I've actually left Super Bowls at halftime. True story. Uh, so you mentioned the Alabama women's basketball. They're hosting Auburn four o'clock on Sunday at Coleman Coliseum. Will you leave at halftime to get a good seat for <laughs> Super Bowl? No judgment here. I'm just asking. Good. I I uh, I hadn't actually thought about that. I didn't know what time the Super Bowl kicked off. But as the athletic director, I knew that we were playing at four o'clock on Sunday in women's basketball. Uh, I will be there for the entire women's basketball game for sure. And uh, I'll be at. I'm going to go to the men's game at Auburn on Saturday. I've got in. I'm on the NCAA men's basketball selection committee. And so I've got meetings with that in Indy next week, but I'm going to try to get down to Knoxville too and and be there on on Wednesday night for the men's game. But it's it's exciting to see both programs having success and that he, the fact that we're sitting here on your show on the next round talking about whether uh, people are going to stay through the whole women's game or, or go home for uh, the Super Bowl. I hope everybody will stay for the entire uh, women's basketball game. And y'all got to come out and, and watch them. It's a great group of kids. They're playing their tail off. 
and it's fun to see. Yeah, a- absolutely. Brown's wife will actually be there uh, coming up uh, Sunday, and uh, my wife walks dogs with one of the players' moms, so we hear about the basketball team, the women's team, a lot. Uh, I did want to, before you go, uh, Aaron Suttles is part of our family up here as well, and I, I wanted to ask you about uh, Yay Alabama, that announcement, and, and Aaron Suttles being a part of that. I know it's not directly a part of, of your department there, but it's something that uh, I think you and Coach Saban and, and Nate Oates are pretty proud of the way this is being laid out for the future at Alabama. Yeah, we we the whole approach from an NIL standpoint is we you've tried we've tried not to have a lot of shock and awe coming out of our program, so to speak. What we've tried to be is slow and steady, and try to build a model that we think is sustainable long term. And so, uh, what uh, high tide traditions got started? A guy named Larry Morris, who's a great friend of our program, started that. Uh, did a very good job of just kind of bridging this and trying to you know we were i've said this a lot the last few years but we were building the plane as we were flying the thing or and high tide traditions was and so we really appreciate all the efforts there and then at the same time too looking you know schools have evolved already with that we're included in that so the a alabama model uh was put together uh by some outside folks and and really have been impressed with the three different prongs that they have uh gonna have the subscription model and that's where aaron fits in and he's going to be the director of content, and it will be good, legitimate content that people will be interested in hearing and reading about. Um, and people, I think, are going to want to subscribe to it, to and knowing that they'll benefit from it, and that our student athletes will benefit from it as well. There's going to be five hundred one c three opportunity for people who want to make uh, charitable contributions, and there'll be charitable charitable opportunities for our kids tied to that. And then there'll be sponsors. And when this whole thing started, one of the things I thought is your multimedia rights could be as legitimate of NIL as there is out there. And so uh, we, you know, we announced our partnership extension with, with Learfield. They're not going to be putting the deals together. They're going to be the conduit between the student athlete, the representation on the student athlete side and the companies that have interest in working with our student athletes, which some of them have already done. We've seen a lot of our student athletes benefit from it, which has been great. We're happy for them. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, we're able to fund the rest of our department in a way that we expect to be able to compete across the board in, in our 21 sports for our 650 kids, uh, 350 employees, all the different things that go into supporting that. Uh, but I really am pleased with the efforts that uh, have gone forward to this point. Aaron's going to be a big part of that. And the, the A Alabama, uh, we've already had some really uh, strong membership sign up and uh, think that will continue as more content comes along. Uh, so, Greg, as you go, uh, the minute you guys started using our Charles Barkley interview in the uh, pregame basketball intro, fans were sending us videos. We believe that's valued at four Final Four tickets in the event Alabama makes it. So, <laughs> do I? Seem, that seems reasonable. Okay. I've already, you know, I, I, being on the men's basketball committee, I do get a few tickets. Um, and I'm hopeful I'm hopeful that I will be inundated with requests. But obviously, we got we got it play it one game at a time yeah. go play well this weekend i do want to say so our fans understand and, it, and and i cannot be any more sincere about this when they talk about alabama in the committee room i have to leave the room and i and last year i was in the committee room and, and i had to leave the room each time and you sit out in the hallway all by yourself it just gives you a chance to you know respond to some emails and such um, but you sit there and you don't, you have no input whatsoever. And then they'll, you come back in the room, there's a doorbell at the, uh, and the, they ring the doorbell and there's a bell that goes out ha- off in the hallway and you walk back in and they'll give you a summary of what was just said. And you can't even make a comment about that. Mm. Uh, you could roll your eyes, I suppose, uh, or raise, you know, give a thumbs up, but that's about all you can do. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a lot easier to be out of the room this year than it was last year. <laughs> <That's for sure. laughs> uh, and by the That's way, sure. this is why we don't let Brown negotiate because the arena, the bass, the football stadium in Houston, you can get us four seats where we'd have a better view in Tuscaloosa than at the top of <laughs> yeah, that place. Yeah, see what I could do. You That's where get, we started. You've got to get four us. better seats, Brown. Uh, uh, all right. He is, uh, <laughs> he is Greg Byrne, the Alabama Athletics Director. You're kind with your time with us, Greg. We greatly appreciate Thank it. Thank you. You betcha. Good to see y'all. Roll Tide. All right. Take care. Greg with us on the Johnston (laughs) RVCenter.com hotline.